Break down today. Press conference for uh, Connor and Khabib. One of the best things I've ever seen, entertainment-wise, without exaggerations, one of the best things I have ever seen in mixed martial arts. It was completely fun. Look, let's back up. Okay, let's back up to yesterday, guys. Connor had two choices when he comes into this press conference. And this isn't a slide to Khabib. This is a reality that Khabib was never going to carry this torch. There was no scenario where Khabib is the one that lights that press conference on fire. So connor has got two choices, okay? He can come in the obnoxious, over-the-top, in-your-face, flamboyant entertainer that everybody wants. Or he can come in subdued because of the environment. He can look across the table at his opponent and go, hey, you're not going to do your part of this thing, so why am I? There's no audience here. There's the wrong energy. This is an environment I'm not used to, so I'm just going to come in and be subdued. I'm going to answer the questions, and I'm going to get out of here as soon as possible. Those were his two choices. Like him or not, but that's, that's all that he's got. He comes in on fire, okay? If one example was that he could come in with a machine gun or he could come in with NyQuil, he came in with a machine gun in both hands. He had a machete tied to his back. He had clips in his socks. This thing was fantastic. As a piece of theater, it was absolutely fantastic, and Connor let it rip. Khabib made a lot of mistakes. I'm going to break those down for you. But you have to understand, this is what we wanted. Okay, when Connor comes on that stage, he's wearing a suit that looks fantastic. He's got his hair done. He's got his beard in check. He's got some cool chains around him. He's breaking out his Irish whiskey. At one point, he gives Dana a shot of the whiskey. Dana drank the whiskey on stage. I mean, everything you could think of that would be entertaining or fun was there. Plus, he got right into Khabib's face. You know, Connor was really up against it on this, artistically. Artistically speaking, he was up against it. He had done such a bad action that it was a crime. It put him in handcuffs. It put him in the jurisdiction of the DA. It put him front and center. But, to, but for a judge, he had to bail himself out. He's got lawsuits going on. He put himself in such a bad situation that the press and the media were pushing back on Dana White for showing that as part of the promotion and the buildup to the fight. This is how bad this was. So guess what Connor did? He steered right into it. He came out and said, the very first thing I did when I walked up to that, but don't, don't bring up the dolly business, me throwing a, a dolly into the window. The very first thing I did is I came and I showed you my hands. I let you see that I was unarmed. It was going to be you against me, man against man. You had friends, I had friends, but I showed you my hands and you wouldn't get off the bus. It doesn't matter who's right in that scenario. This was a powerful picture that Connor was now recreating, right? Connor had one of the best lines in the history of mixed martial arts, and nobody heard it. So I'm going to retell it to you. And I can't remember why no one heard it. Either Dana started to say something as Connor delivered this, or Khabib started to say something as Connor delivered the line. But some, somebody else was talking, and it happened like that. But I picked it up. I go, oh my God, that was gold. So he told Khabib, the line was simply, he told Khabib, you tapped, you tapped the window. Now, what he's talking about is when I came and put pressure on the bus, when I attacked the bus, you were so scared. You tried to tap out, you tapped out against the window. It was a very simple line, but he said, you tapped the window. And everybody missed it. I want to bring it to your guys' attention because it was absolute gold. Now, here's the mistake that Khabib was making. And one thing about Connor, I mean, this guy was red hot. And Connor's fired on all cylinders. And one thing about Connor that he doesn't get enough credit for is Connor's a man of his word. When he says he's going to do something, he does something. And I think guys in this sport should get more credit for that. And guys don't get credit, which is why guys don't mind being chickens. That's why they don't mind signing contracts and then pulling out, missing weight, finding excuses, taking the low road. Nothing happens to them. On the playground, if you didn't show up to the bell at 3 o'clock and the other guy did, you lost. That's the way it used to be in this sport back when men were men. Now you, now you got something else going on. Conor McGregor? follows through on his word and he called Khabib out point blank and he said you had better show up on October 6th and Khabib said why would I not show up and Connor said you, pu you pull out of all sorts of fights you miss weight for all sorts of fights you never do what you're supposed to say I'm paraphrasing now for those of you that watch it but Connor called him out on it he said I'm gonna be there on October 6th I fought hurt before I fought overweight and had a struggle to get down to the limit that was agreed upon before I come in every time, and you don't. Khabib, this was the weak spot, the weak spot of the whole press conference, is Khabib said, what, what if I don't show up? We will just do it another time. Whoa, it doesn't work that way. 
It does not work that way. Khabib had better show up on weight on October 6th, period, period. If he shows up an ounce overweight or he doesn't show up at all, this goes to Connor. And they don't need to rebook the match. Connor did everything that he was supposed to do. I know as you're watching this, this video, you're thinking Chael's taking Connor's side. I'm not doing that, but I'm, I'm crediting for today and for what happened. Khabib was up against it. He was up against it from Jump Street. We all knew that he was up against it. So you go out there and do the level best that you can. This is just not his sport, okay? Every time, this was a brilliant move, and I'm afraid you guys would have missed it. Every time Connor got into a jam, Every time Khabib would ask him something, or somebody would ask him something, or Khabib would say something that was damning to Connor, much like the great Andy Kaufman, much like the great Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Connor McGregor would respond by going, ib, 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 ib. he would make a fake silly voice. He would just speak over him. Khabib would ask him something that put Connor in a bad light, and Connor would respond, ib, 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 ib. <laughs> I can't even do it. I can't even do it. It was so funny. I was falling out of my seat watching this, and that is how he would deal with the question. He would never answer the question. Khabib also made one other big mistake, and you'll see, you guys will see this in politics a lot, right? Because this is a debate. This is just like politics. It doesn't matter if you're a presidential, gubernatorial, whatever it is, we can get two opposing views up on a stage. All you've got is your body language and your words and your wit. That's who the winner is going to be. In that scenario, that's cast in the form of a vote on election day. In this scenario, it's cast by a round of applause at the end of the day. But Connor won this, and I want to tell you one of the mistakes that Khabib made is it was a Q&A, and Khabib had questions of Connor. So Khabib would ask Connor the question. Connor would not answer the question, and then Khabib would be frustrated and then re-ask the question. And at one point, Dana White even said, all right, next question. He turned to the media, and Khabib steps in and goes, no, 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 I have a question. I, my question needs to be answered. Connor doesn't need to answer your questions. That's why it's a sucker's move. You don't ever do that in a debate. Connor McGregor is not under subpoena to be there. He is not under oath. He doesn't owe you an answer. And he did not give Khabib an answer. And when Connor dismissed the question that Khabib demanded be shown respect, it made Khabib look weak. Before anybody responds and goes, Khabib's not weak and he's going to win the fight, we're not talking about the fight. We're talking about the battle that happened today at the press conference, and I'm sharing with you some mistakes that he did. Body language is also a very big deal. Look, Connor was very disciplined to stay in his lane and as, as the showboating entertainer, okay, that's gonna draw people's attention, that's going to provoke a fight. Khabib was very disciplined to stay in his lane, of a gentleman, of a sportsman, all the while keeping his fingers crossed and hoping that Connor would induce a self-inflicted wound where eventually he would drive out of that lane and wreck his own car. That was the only way Khabib was going to get over today. And Connor just simply do it. It did not do it. At one point, I will tell you, Connor went a little bit too far when he said to Khabib, had you gotten off that bus, you would be dead right now. Now, in fighter terms, I can tell you, I'm going to kill you. I'm not actually threatening your life. I don't even mean for a second that I'm going to stop your pulse. No, not at all. But those are fighter terms. I'm, I'm going I'm to gonna, I'm gonna kick your ass. At no point am I going to take my foot to your butt. Right? These are fighter terms. Connor doubled down on it, though, when he said, you would be dead and I would be in a jail cell. That's when it became a reality of, wait a second, now you did just threaten his life. Now you did just threaten his life. And in the spirit of hail fellow well met, we don't do that. But that was the only time that Connor ever drove out of his lane. The rest of the time, he was fantastic, and he went after everything. He, he gave a damn about any of it. He went after Putin. He went after Russia. He talked about the Dagestani people. And if you guys understand the geography of Russia as it pertains to Dagestan, I mean, there's some real interesting things there. Connor was all over the map. And then he challenged him. And this sounded like really tough guy talk. And it was. That's the point of a press conference, okay? Tough guy talk captivate people, make people believe it, don't manufacture anything. And Connor didn't manufacture anything. Connor meant it and he was speaking from the heart. And that's the reason all of you believed it. That's the reason you guys were entertained. If there was any winking going on, if there was any elbow pokes going on, man, the whole thing's a bunch of garbage. This was real. As Connor sees it, for Connor's truth, he shared his truth with the world today. Khabib, for his part, also shared his truth. He just doesn't, look, he's up against it, okay? He's taking on the greatest entertainer in the sport with a microphone in his hand. It's just a big problem. 
and you just started to see this and you started to see how engaging this was. Uh, Connor would ask Khabib questions that there were no answers to. Connor's up there pitching his whiskey and Khabib says, I don't drink. And Connor says, why do you not drink? Well, there's no answer to that question. But why doesn't he drink? He doesn't, he doesn't it, 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 religious maybe? Maybe he doesn't want, want to do the alcohol? He could be allergic. I, I have no idea. But there is no answer to that question. I don't drink because I don't drink. That's it. That's it. The end of it. So Connor kept pushing him on this. Why do you not drink? Why do you not drink? And Khabib just stood up there like a fool. He had no answer. You have to understand when you're in a verbal fight, okay, when two politics, when anybody's in a verbal fight on a stage, you must have an answer. If you were ever in an alpha off, trying to be the alpha male in the room, you must have an answer, right, wrong, or indifferent. You do not stand there quiet. Connor refused to answer his questions, set up by Khabib. He never should have asked him questions. He doesn't have the right to ask him questions. He should have seen that one coming. And two, Connor would then pose questions to Khabib that have no answer. Do you guys understand why that's brilliant? Do you understand why that's a brilliant thing to do? And then when he would get in a jam, <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. I want to do it for you. When Connor would get in a jam, he would just start mumbling cartoon talk. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I was covering this thing for ESPN. I was just hoping they didn't throw to me. I was laughing so hard. And if you guys know who the great comic Andy Kaufman was, who was way ahead of his time, or if you guys even know who Dwayne The Rock Johnson is, that's a move that they invoke, okay? It's a move that I've invoked it many times myself. I just, I thought it would be arrogant to tell you guys, right? put myself in their class and then bring it into you. But it's a, I've done the same thing, so I knew what Connor was doing. When you're in a jam, you just, you just stumble the other guy. You make the other guy look like a fool. You make the other guy lose his temper. And when you're ready for it and that's what you want because you've already lost your temper, nothing bad can come from it. Nothing bad can come from it. All you can do is lure him into your game. And I thought they both showed real discipline to go out there and do what they wanted to do. I don't think that Khabib is going to watch this video and then say, yeah, Chael, you're right, and I wish I would have had more flair on it. I don't think that's Khabib's style. I think that, that he liked the way that this went down. All the same, I will share with you whether Khabib will or not, he was very happy when that press conference was over.